Hi, welcome to Greenbelt Career Institute uh, GNA Clinical Examination Preparation Video Series. So now you have to know, this is to show you how the exam is presented so that you can be prepared. We're going to start with skill number one which is hand washing. But I want to show you what happens on that day. The examiner will call at least two people into the room. Um, the, the order of people is already set by the state. She is not the one to determine. We don't know if it's alph alphabetical order. It's, it could be randomly. It doesn't matter. Be prepared. Okay. So I'm going to invite two um, students in and then um, kind of demonstrate what happens on that day. So, Miss Alice, Miss Janice, come on in. Okay. Okay, just stand right there. Okay. So, what the examiner will do will be to hand them their five skills. It's already selected by the state. She's not the one that selects it. So, she will give um, each person their skills. Then, she will give instructions as to how it's going to go um, in between skills, what happens, do you need to use hand sanitizer or do you need to just verbalize that I wash my hands. Um, then she'll go through all the explanations and you can ask questions, you know, questions such as, well, where do I keep the denture when I finish cleaning it? Um, but uh, normally you return the denture back to where you got it from. Um, so you ask any question you want to ask the examiner at that point. Once the, she finished the instructions, you do not ask any question again. Um, she's going to set the time. It's 30 minutes to perform five skills. And once the clock is on, she does not pause the clock. You're going to go from uh, hand washing, like in the case of Miss Alice. Once she starts, she's going to go hand washing. When she finishes hand washing next, she's going to go to count and record radio pulse. Finish that, she goes to the next one. And it has to be in order. You can't jump from scale number two to scale number four. You have to do it in the order that it was presented by the states. So what um, happens is that one person has to be the resident while the other person gets tested. Um, the examiner might pick who, or somebody might volunteer, or she might say the person number one will be the resident and person number two will be tested. When they finish, they will switch position and person number number two will get tested. Sorry, person number one will get tested while person number two will play the resident. So what we're going to do now is, um, I'll just stand there. And sometimes she'll call four people at a time, or five. The rest will be standing here while one person will play the resident, maybe person number one. Then person number two will begin the exam. So the one person can volunteer for all, all, all the other four, three or four. Then the last person, after that last person finished their test, they will now play the resident so that person number one can be tested. So, Miss um, Janice, I need you to... So the person that's going to be playing the resident will have to put on a nightgown. So Miss Alice, you need to put on a nightgown. Okay. And then I'm going to demonstrate the skills. You don't know how to put on a nightgown? <laughs> okay. Put it on and you're gonna get in bed and play an old lady. Put it on. It, it doesn't go like a shirt, it goes like a gown. And then let me tie it in the back. You've been to the hospital before. You know, didn't don't you remember wearing something like this? Yeah. Okay. So that gets tied in the back. So get in bed. I just just stand there and watch. Take yeah, take off your shoes. You don't you don't get in bed with your shoes on, do you? Okay, get in bed under the cover. Okay. okay. 
Now, the first um, skill for everyone is hand washing. So that's what I'm going to demonstrate now. Now, I'm wearing a, a ring on, a wedding ring. If you have jewelry, take them off on that exam day. So I'm going to take off my wedding ring. Remember to put it back on so you don't get in trouble at home. So, if you have bangles, so do not wear a, a, a long sleeve. So make sure you, you have, you're just going to have a short sleeve on. Okay. So, what's going to happen next will be that, so now I'm being tested. So I'm going to demonstrate the hand washing skill. If you look in your um, handbook, hand washing is the only skill that you need to greet and introduce yourself. Greet the residents and introduce yourself. Then you start the hand washing. When you finish the hand washing, you now go to your next skill. You go back to the resident and say, next, I'm going to assist you with this, or I'm going to assist you with that, depending on what what is skill number two for you? Okay, so I'm going to start the hand washing demonstration. Hello, Miss Janice. Hi. My name is Mr. Raymond. I'm going to be your CNA for today. But before I assist you with anything, I'm going to wash my hands, okay? Okay. Okay. So then you could come to the um, sink and follow your steps. Turn on the water, make sure the temperature is comfortable for you. You do not need to use the towel to, to turn the water on. Then soak your hands. By the way, you don't have to I'm, I'm saying this because I'm teaching. When you're doing this, you don't keep you don't have to keep saying every step that you're doing. Get the soap. Distribute the soap around, um, all over, leather. Then you start scrubbing. You know, you have to scrub for 20 seconds, producing friction. If you want to do a silent count, that's fine. But make sure you don't go too fast. Okay, you have to, in between the fingers, you need to wash, uh, wash the nails. And that's how you do the nails. And the other side. Your wrist. Your wrist. Then you rinse. And make sure you do not touch the sink at any time. And make sure you rinse completely. You don't want to have uh, soap, a spot of soap hanging on the on the back of your hand. Do not splash. Make sure you rinse completely, and make sure you also st uh, don't let your uniform touch the sink. Get the paper towel. You get to first time. Dry your hands, pointing down so that the water doesn't run down to your elbow. You have to dry completely. Okay, get another. Make sure it's completely dry. Sometimes the examiner wants to inspect your hands to see if it if you dry completely. Get another tissue and turn the water off. Drop that in the trash can. And that, that concludes uh, hand washing. So what you would do at this point will be to go to skill number two, which will be a different video. So see you um, on skill number two. Next we're going to uh, demonstrate um, Counting respiration. Miss Jenny's next, I'm going to uh, check your respiration. Okay? okay. I'm going to provide you this.
So the student will watch the chest and the examiner will watch the chest. When you feel that you can count, so for example, that's one, that's two, then you look at the clock and let the examiner know when you want to start. Go ahead. When do you want to start? I want to start measuring the respiration by two. Now. Got 16. So you would have passed. Okay, good job. That concludes. Well, you before you do that, make sure you give the resident a call light and make sure that that is in the lowest position and that is locked. Then you undo privacy, and that concludes uh, respiration. Hi. Next, we're going to demonstrate dressing a client with affected or weak right arm. You have to remember it's the right hand that is the weak hand. Next, Ms. Janice, I'm going to assist you to dress you up. Okay. okay. Provide privacy. You must get two outfits so that you give her an option. Janice, I have this beautiful yellow dress and a beautiful black dress. Which one would you like to put on today? The yellow dress. The yellow dress, okay. I'll put the black dress back. Put the black dress back. Okay. First, I'm going to... So you need to keep the right hand straight as if it's paralyzed. So that the whole purpose is to learn how to dress a client up who's right hand is paralyzed. So if you're the student, you have to make sure that you leave that hand lying down like that. Don't move it. This hand, the left hand is the strong hand and that can move. So first you're going to uncover. I'm going to uncover you a little bit. I'm going to sit you up so I can untie the gown from the back. Okay, so sit up, sit up for me. Okay, so support the back and untie the gown. Then you first remove from the strong hand. Take this off. Keep okay, her covered. Then you're going to like under the sheet, fold in and then uncover from this end. Take out the gown. So you take everything out and then slide out this way. I'm just going to slide this out. Okay. Keep her covered. Okay, sorry. Okay. Alright, then place this in the linen hamper. Now remember when you're dressing the client, you start with the affected right hand. It has to button in the front. So you're going to go like this. Okay. Try to pick the outfit that is going to be more convenient for you. Okay. I'm 
me just sit you up, okay? Okay. Support the back. Bring the other. Get the back straightened out here. You can lie down. Okay, put this hand in. have to button at least two buttons. Give her her call light. Here's your call light. Place the bed in the lowest position. Make sure the bed is locked. Under privacy. And then I wash my hands. And that concludes dressing the clients. Would affect it. Hi, next I'm going to demonstrate the skill of feeding the client who cannot feed self. Ms. Dennis, next I'm going to assist to feed you, okay? To feed you your dinner. Well, it's going to be breakfast. Okay. All right. I'm going to go get the, the tray. Now for the, uh, the exam, you have to eat the food for real. So the examiner is going to make sure that everything is clean. The plates, the spoon is clean. And for this meal, sometimes the examiner will prepare the food. Sometimes the student have to prepare the food. So open this up and put a little bit. That's Fruit Loops, and this is Frosted Flakes, open, it has to be fresh pack, so that the resin can eat it, the students playing the resin can eat it for real. Okay. Fresh water, most likely the examiner prepares this in advance, so don't worry. You will need um, a small towel to use as a protector. You will also need hand wipes. Okay, so you're gonna come and place this here. Before you sit to start feeding, you have to identify the resident to make sure it's the right tray. Ms. Janice, can you please state your full name for me? I want to make sure that this is the right tray for you. Janice Ekpedani. Okay, that's Janice Ekpedani. Okay. I'm going to raise your head up about 75 to 90 degrees so you can be seated while eating because we don't want you to choke. Okay. Just the table. Okay. All right. You have to get a chair and sit at eye level. Okay. Just, if you don't mind, I'm going to put this protector. Um, just step back a little bit so you can get the mist to so close there. I'm gonna so that we don't make have any accidents on your beautiful dress. Okay. Okay. All right. Then I'm going to wash your hands. Your Use a different one for the other hand. Now for your breakfast, we have Fruit Loops and we have Frosted Flakes. Which one would you like to try first? Fruit Loops. 
Fruit Loops. It's going to be a dry cereal with no milk. You let the resident finish chewing and swallowing. And then you're going to offer everything the second round. Miss Janice, um, next, would you like to try the Fruit Loops again or would you like to try the Frosted Flakes or would you like some water? Some, some water. So water. at this point, everybody's supposed to say they want water. And you have to drink the water for real. Okay. Every time you offer water, just kind of tap the side of the lips a little bit. Then you're going to offer everything again. But this time, we always advise the student to say that they're full. So that the skill can end. Don't give your fellow student a hard time by wanting to eat everything in the plate. And that's going to, you know... You're wasting her time. So when I offer you everything again, you're going to say you're full again. Okay. So, Miss Janice, next, would you like to try the Fruit Loops again or the, the uh, Frosted Flakes? Or would you like some more water? Unfortunately, I'm full. Okay. You sure? Yes. Okay, fine. All right, so you're going to wipe your hands again. Even though she did not touch anything, you're supposed to wipe the hands again. Okay. And wipe them out. Follow this. And take this off. Okay. Then you're going to take your stuff. Back to where you got them from. Goes in the trash. This would go in the hamper. Okay, Miss Janice, I'm gonna leave you up like this since you just ate. Okay. Um, because we don't want you to choke. Would you like this table here, or you want me to put it aside here? Yes. Okay. So here's your call light. Thank you. I'm gonna make sure the bed is in the lowest position. It is, and the bed is locked. I undo privacy. And that concludes feeding the clients. Okay, so I'm going to finish putting on your nightgown. Sorry. I'm going to cover you up. Let me take this off. Okay. I'm going to dump the water. area. Get my soup. Right. I'm going to separate the wet linen from the dry linen and place them in the You're all cleaned up. Just want to fix you up nicely. And make sure the bed is in the lowest position. It is locked. Here is your call light. If you need help, you call. to undo privacy and I wash my hands and that concludes um, a modified bed bath. The next skill I'm going to demonstrate is measuring urine output. So the examiner will have, I uh, will use the, this is Susie's urine. 
she will prepare the urine. What she will do is pour the urine in the bedpan. Okay. And she might place it on the floor somewhere or she might place it in, on, in the designated dirty area. And what you're supposed to do is to pour the urine into the uh, measuring cup, set it on the table, go down at eye level and see the recording of the urine. So I'm just starting now. You're going to start with putting on your gloves. Because you're handling urine. You're going to get a paper towel and line it on the table. You need to be stand up so you can get it. Line the uh, table with the paper towel. If you, this, this is adjustable. You're going to get your measuring cup, get your urine, pour it over the Come out. Make sure you don't spill. Okay. Place the cup on the barrier on the table. Rinse your bedpan. Do not pour the rinse in the sink. You're going to pour the rinse in the sink. You do not need to wipe the bedpan. Place it in the designated dirty area. And then you're going to go at eye level and see what's the measurement of the urine. The examiner is also going to look. So it's between 400 and about between 400 and 450. So I would say that's 425. It's not quite up to the 450 line. It's slightly above the 400 line. So that's 425 ml. Okay. The examiner will record her um, measurement. So the next thing you would do is to empty the urine in the commode. Don't forget it was 425. Rinse. Cut. Or any commode. Place it in the designated dirty area. Clean up your table. Take off your glove. I wash my hands. Then you go and record. You're going to record 425. ML. You're going to have a, a sheet the examiner will give you so you can record your results. 425 ML. And then that will conclude the skill. Next we're going to demonstrate um, the skill of passive range of motion to one knee and ankle. Next Ms. Uh, Janice, I'm going to assist you to exercise one leg. Okay. okay. So provide privacy. I'm going to uncover you. Uncover one leg. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, bend this leg inward and take it out three times, okay? And if at any time you feel pain, you let me know so we can stop, okay? So you're going to support the ankle with one hand, support under the knee with one hand. Do not go out this way because the leg doesn't bend that way. So you're going to bend inside. So you go bend like that. That's one. That's two. That's three. You okay? 
then let me know if you have anything from this one. So next, I'm going to exercise your ankle. And at any time, if you feel pain, you let me know, okay? okay. Support the ankle and hold on to the feet. I'm going to bend it towards you and back towards me three times, okay? That's one. That's two. That's three. You feel okay? Yes. Alright. So we're finished. I'm gonna cover you up. Here's your call light. Thank you. You're welcome. That is in the lowest position. And I lock the bed. I don't do privacy. I wash my hands. And that concludes a range of motion to the, to the leg. Next we're going to demonstrate the scale of passive range of motion to one shoulder. Next, Ms. Janice, I'm going to assist you to exercise your hand, your, your shoulder. Okay. okay. We will use the left shoulder. Okay. And this skill does not require any glove. You can provide privacy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to exercise this hand. I'm going to take your hand all the way up as far as it can go and bring it back three times. And if at any point you feel any pain, you let me know, okay, so we can stop. Okay. When you're doing range of motion, you're going to support the wrist with one hand and support the elbow with the other hand. And you're going to move the whole hand as one in one piece. So here we go. go. Gently all the way as far as you can go. Back. That's one. That's two. That's three. You feel okay? Yes. Okay, next I'm going to bring your hand out this way. To your shoulder length and take it back three times and again if you feel any pain you let me know so we can stop okay all right that's one that's two that's three good job you did good that uh, we're done. I'm going to straighten you out. Here's your call light. Thank you. You're welcome. Bed is, is in the lowest position. And bed is locked. I undo privacy. And I wash my hands. And that concludes range of motion to the shoulder. Next we're going to demonstrate the skill of placing the residents on one side. Supporting with three pillows. Next, Miss Janice, I'm going to assist you to turn you to the side, okay? I'm going to use three pillows to support you. Um, I'm going to provide privacy and then I'll get the pillows, okay? okay. Get the pillows. to put the head of your bed down. Okay, the head of, bed, head of your bed is down already. You make sure that the side rail is up. Side rail is already up. So now I'm going to uncover you and turn you to the side. So I'm going to turn you to the side. All right. Let me adjust this pillow so you Support the back so that the resin does not roll back. So you fold the pillow this way and then support the push it. The next pillow goes under the arm.
last pillar goes between between the ankle and the knee. And then you bend the top leg. Then make sure she's not lying on this arm here. Okay. So adjust the arm. And then you can cover her up. Make sure she can, she's holding on to it. Here's your call light you. in case you need help. Your bed this is it's in the lowest position. Bed is locked. Under privacy. Now wash my hands. And that concludes placing the resident on, on the side. Hi, next I'm going to demonstrate the scale of mouth care. Hi, Miss Janice. I'm going to assist you with mouth care. Okay. I'm going to brush it. Okay. Okay. I'm going to provide privacy. I'm going to get my supplies. So, with oral care, we're going to need one barrier, one barrier for the table, and a protector, small towel as protector. We're going to need, so let me put this on the table first. This is basin, toothpaste. We will have brand new toothbrush for everyone. If you cannot use a cheap toothbrush that we provide, you need to come with your own toothbrush from home. And if you use electric uh, brush or so, you have to bring it on that day. If you have any mouth problem, maybe you have bleeding gums or you're not comfortable with your teeth being brushed, you have to let the examiner know that you don't want to volunteer for mouth care. On it gloves. And so we're gonna make a cup of water. Okay. Put on my gloves. So we can stand this way. So I'm going to put your, the head of your bed up so you can be in a sitting position. About 75 to 90 degrees. This would have been like a residence brush, which are not disposable. Okay. So you would soak, it's, it's residence brush, you can soak it in the water, wet it a little bit, put a little bit of toothpaste on. Don't put too much. Okay. So you're going to brush across. You're gonna brush the inside. So open your teeth for me. Just put it together, put your teeth together. Put your teeth together. <laughs> so you're gonna brush this way. Brush the inside. Be gentle. Okay. You open your mouth for me. Okay. Brush the inside. Brush the upper. Stick your tongue out for me. Okay. Remember to maintain clean technique. You don't need to put, you can put the brush 
down in a way that will not turn it, then you're going to give the resin water to rinse the mouth, give it a rinse and spit it in here. Take your brush, make sure like this. Trash. Going to rinse. I'm going to go back a little bit so you can get it. If the cup is disposable, you dispose the cup. If it's the resin's cup, you rinse it and put the cup back. Put on this here. And you're going to clean out your area. Place the linen basket. You're going to take off your gloves. I wash my hands. like this to stay here? Yes. And would you like to be in a sitting position or you want me to put it back down? Sitting position. Okay. Here's your call light. Thank you. That is in the lowest position. That is locked. I undo privacy. And that concludes mouth care. Next I'm going to demonstrate uh, measuring and recording blood pressure. Manual blood pressure. Manual blood pressure is one of the most difficult uh, skills throughout the state. The uh, pass rate for blood pressure is low, so a lot of people tend to get blood pressure. So pay close attention. Ms. Janice, next I'm going to assist you to measure your blood pressure, okay? Okay. Provide privacy. Make sure the bed is in safe position. That is locked. I'm going to sit you up, okay? Okay. Assist you to sit. And put on your shoe. Okay. So you will bring the bedside table. Who should I go? Okay. I need you to place your hand out like this for me. Just one hand. Your blood pressure supply equipment will be here. You will need um, alcohol wipes, a dual stethoscope. One to one end, the instructor will listen, and while the student listens, on the other end, and then the blood pressure cuff. So the first thing that you're going to do, if the if the examiner does not wipe her stethoscope, then you need to wipe it for her. So you start wiping yours first. Make sure they don't um, get twisted. So wipe your stethoscope. Use one pad per earpiece. Because several people use the stethoscope, so you need to wipe the stethoscope. So wipe.
then you will place this around your neck. Make sure you place it the way it's going to go in the ear, pointing out. You should not uh, place the stethoscope this way into your ear. You will not hear it well. It should be that way. Okay. Then you're going to wipe the bell of the stethoscope, which is this. You can use one to wipe this one. Then, before you place the blood pressure cuff, make sure you locate the brachial artery. It's going to be in the middle there. Just go there and uh, check it for two, about two seconds. Okay. Next thing is to place the wrap the blood pressure cuff. But before you wrap it, look at how the information there. It says artery, left arm, artery, right arm. You just place your right arm on the table. Let me show. Okay. Let me explain something. So if you were wrapping the stethoscope on the left arm, after you locate the left artery, you will make sure that this arrow is pointing to that spot there. So the left arm arrow should be pointing to where you located the left arm artery. If you're using the right arm, you're going to make sure that the right arm arrow is pointing to where you located the artery. So this will be the correct way. So we're using the right arm, so we're going to wrap it now. Make sure you leave some space for the stethoscope here, so you will not be, don't wrap like this. So take it up a little bit, so you leave space for the stethoscope. Make sure you wrap it tight enough, not too tight and not too loose. Then you place the meter, you know, press that and then hook it underneath so that both you and the examiner can see the reading. Now you put this in your ear now. And you place the stethoscope right there. Support it. Make sure it's covered completely. Then you're going to close the knob here. Not too tight, because you're going to slowly open it. So don't make it too tight. Tonight it's, it's locked, it's closed. You're supposed to pump all the way to 180 before you start releasing it slowly. If you release it and immediately hear a sound, you're supposed to deflate completely and inflate to 200. All right, so let's inflate now. Make sure you're holding the, status, the, uh, the pump here in a way that will allow you to handle it correctly. Pump all the way to one, about 180. Okay. Then slowly deflate. And then watch the meter and listen. Can deflate once it gets down to about 40 you're not gonna you know the, the, the strong sound will be will fade away so what you want to do is um, you're listening to you're looking at the meter go down as you as it as you deflate it where do you hear the first sound that's gonna be your systolic and where you heard the last sound is gonna be your diastolic so the next thing you will do is to on that. Okay. Is it 
percentage of blood pressure was 110 over 56. You can tell the resident what the blood pressure was, but you can put your supply away. Copy your sorry, your trash. And it says, we like to sit, or would you like to lie down? Sit. Sit, okay. Give your resident a light. Make sure the bed is in the lowest position and the bed is locked. And then you're going to wash your hands first. Wash your hands. The examiner would have given you a sheet to record your result. Then you will record, you know, um, 110 over 56. You have to come to within 8 plus or minus of the examiner's result to be able to pass. That concludes blood pressure. The skill I'm about to demonstrate is cleaning the dentures. You'll notice we have the denture cup, I have an emesis basin, toothpaste, a toothbrush, as well as gloves. I'm going to take all my materials over to the sink. Now, you will note that it says I must have gloves on before touching the dentures. This is the denture cuff. At this point in time, I do not need to be wearing my gloves. It specifically states when touching dentures. Follow me, please. To the sink area. I am going to place, once again, a barrier. Putting my equipment out. We need to partially fill our sink or line our sink either with water or with some type of cushioning device as our dentures are very expensive to replace. My suggestion is we are going to do both. I begin by placing the stopper in the sink. Turning on the water and placing paper toweling in the bottom of the sink, thus cushioning and preventing any unfortunate, very expensive accidents from happening. If you know, it says to have tepid water. I'm testing my water, and that feels good. bristles of the brush, never place them on a potentially dirty surface, nor do you want to place it bristle down, always bristle up, please. Holding the dentures over the sink area, I am going to rinse the dentures, and then I'm going to place them in the emesis basin. Contents of the denture cup. Now I make sure that I rinse out both the cup portion as well as the lid. Both portions must must be rinsed. I am now filling it approximately halfway with water. Next, I wet my toothbrush. I'm going to place the toothpaste on the brush. Please put the cap up. Try not to touch the lip of your toothpaste container on the bristles themselves. Replace the cap. Now I can take my teeth, my dentures, and I am brushing all surfaces of the denture, holding it low over the sink. As you note, I'm washing all sides. Hold on because they get very slick. Flip them over. Okay. 
and now I want to rinse. I can now place my clean dentures back in the cup and place the lid on it. Rinse your toothbrush. Place it on your barrier. Now rinse and dry your emesis basin. Place your toothpaste, your toothbrush. Is dry. Note that I am not placing these in our designated dirty area as these are clean, so they will stay in a clean area. Next, I'm emptying my sink out, removing the paper towel that is disposed of, removing the stopper that's placed out. I now remove my gloves appropriately. Place them in the trash and verbalize washing my hands. And that concludes cleaning the dentures. Good afternoon. The skill I'm about to demonstrate is donning and removing PPE. PPE, of course, being your personal protective equipment. As you can see before me, I have a gown and we have gloves. Those are the only materials you need for this particular skill. I'll begin by removing my lab jacket. Open the package for the gown. Dispose of that. Now without flinging the gown in the air, because we must be weary of airborne pathogens, I'll place one arm in the gown, then the second arm in the gown. I'll then take the ties to the neck area and tie them. Please be extremely careful to tie in a bow as opposed to a knot. A knot does not allow you to get out of your gown. Next, you want to make sure that the back is covered as much as possible. Then we proceed to tie the waist in a bow as opposed to a knot. Next, I will put my gloves on. It is easier if you pull the cuffs somewhat over your hands to begin with. Our object here is to make sure that the cuffs of our gown are covered by our gloves. As you can see, the cuffs are covered, my clothing is covered. Next, I'm going to remove the PPE. Expose the cuff slightly on both of your hands. Next, taking one gloved hand, I'm pinching the palm of the other and pulling that glove off and holding it in the original hand. Now, I am able to touch the cuff with my hand, this way or this way, but do not touch the yellow area as that is contaminated. So sliding my fingers underneath, I now turn the gloves completely inside out and they will be disposed of in the trash container. Now, without touching the outside of the gown, I will untie the neck portion 
of the gown, releasing that. Now we'll do the same with the waist area, untying the gown. Now, remembering that the cuff area is still clean, I will slide my finger once again underneath the cuff, pulling it over my hand. I will now take my hand, I will pull this hand in, pulling the cuff over. Now I will take the gown, holding it away from my body. I will turn it inside out so that now the clean that was against my body is on the outside and the soiled area is on the inside. I will now dispose of that in the trash container. And I will state, for testing purposes only, I will now wash my hands. And that concludes PPE.